If you watched the first episode, you'd have seen the amount of energy and effort that goes into preparing the ewes to get them pregnant, to put them to the ram, building the lambing shed and getting ready for lambing. Now we're inside the shed and what we're doing here is delving into the lambing process. What the shepherds will be looking for, for the early signs of a ewe about to give birth. Coming up in this episode, we'll be looking deeper into ewe nutrition now that the ewes are heavily pregnant and what signs to look for when a ewe is about to give birth. So this is the outside of our lambing barn and these are the windows where the, each section where we've got ewes inside that are heavily pregnant poke their heads out to feed from the silage. And the nutrition of the pregnant ewe is very, very important, particularly towards the last six to eight weeks of pregnancy. So the gestation period being five months, the lamb grows very quickly in the last six to eight weeks. In fact, 75% of the fetal growth is in that time. And so the ewes are split into different groups. We've got singles, twins, and triplets, and they get a slightly different ration of food depending on how many lambs they're carrying. Obviously, a ewe carrying twins needs a higher nutritional plane than a ewe carrying a single, so that the ewe gives birth in good condition, has plenty of milk, and the lambs are the optimum size. So in the food, this is known as a total measured ration, and it varies depending on the species, so it might be sheep or cattle or goats, and also their age or whether they're pregnant or not, or feeding young. So the main makeup of this diet is grass. This is silage that we cut in the summer and then we kept in anaerobic conditions where it pickles and holds all its nutritional value. We then take that out and chop it up in our feeder wagon and mix in all the other ingredients. The other thing we've got in there is maize and that's been harvested from our maize maize that we had at the Cotswold Farm Park during the autumn and a little bit we bought in from a neighbour. There's some ground up beans that are a form of protein. They're also homegrown, so we don't buy in soya from abroad. It's a homegrown protein. And then also barley in there for energy and some molasses. Its mix is specifically formulated by an animal nutritionist who we use as a consultant. Our livestock manager then talks to Luke who runs the machinery and mixes it all up. And it's done with great accuracy. So on the forage wagon is a weigh scales and a computer. And each ingredient that he puts into the forage wagon, whether that's straw or silage, beans, minerals, molasses, it weighs as it, as it goes in, tells him exactly how much he needs, and then it mixes it and chops it so it's exactly the right length. And then all of that information is sent to Mike, our livestock manager, and he can check on his phone that Luke is doing a good job. And we also then can work out how much our animals are eating. If we feed them and suddenly they're eating a lot less, maybe that group of animals isn't feeling very well or we're overfeeding them. So it's really precision farming managed very, very carefully. So we deliver this total mix ration to the ewes every morning and there's enough for them to eat during the day and night. And if you want to find out more about making silage, then check out the episode we made last summer all about forage. So we've now come inside the lambing barn. What we have here is our tiered seating, so the general public can see the ewes in their pens where they're going to give birth within the next few days. Have that area where people can walk in and out, and then the gap between the lambing ewes and the general public. And in each of these pens, we've got groups of ewes split up into how many lambs they're carrying. So singles, twins, and triplets and they're mainly our commercial ewes, the clean Romney Crosses, but we also have other breeds in there, some of our rare breeds, the Cotswolds, the Kerry Hills, the Norfolks, and a few others too. The shed is the perfect place for these ewes to be giving birth, for them, but particularly for the shepherd. And so for them, it's nice and airy and healthy, and they've got a clean straw bed to lie on, we've got the windows for them to look out and feed on the total measured ration, the silage mix. But for the shepherd, what you've got is the comfort of the shed. So if it's chucking it down with rain, 
here you are inside a building. It's also safer for the ewes that are not out in the freezing cold conditions or rain. But then also, because sheep give birth day and night, what you can do in here is turn the lights on and check that everyone's okay. And we have a shepherd in here 24 seven, keeping an eye on the sheep on a rotation of people. We've got about two or three on the livestock side of the farm, but we have extra people come and help at lambing time. And so what we're looking for when a ewe is about to give birth is that she becomes quite restless. She tends to move to the corner of a pen. Out in the field or in a wild situation, a ewe would move away from the flock to give birth. But in here, of course, they're contained within the pens. So they're moving away is generally moving to a corner. They lie down and stand up and go round and round in circles because they're feeling uncomfortable. They're about to give birth. And then eventually they start having contractions. They start to push. And you can quite clearly see that because when the ewe lies down, she'll often throw her head back and we call it stargazing. She looks at the stars as she heaves and has those contractions. And the contractions are a really important process for the muscles to start to relax inside the ewe, to open up the gateway to, for the lamb to be born. What's happening is there's the ewe's cervix, which is closed, and inside her is the womb, where the lambs are floating in a bag of syrupy water, attached by their umbilical cord, where they get all their energy and food and oxygen from the ewe's blood. And as she has those contractions, the lamb is pushing against the inside of the cervix, and it slowly dilates, it opens wide enough for then the lamb to pass through. So we allow the ewe to just go through the whole process of being restless and having her contractions, relaxing her muscles, ready to give birth to the lamb. And then we keep a careful eye on her because we want the lamb to be born in the correct position. And that's the diving position, two front feet and nose first. Sometimes they might be born in the incorrect position, so with a leg back or both legs back, a head back, or coming backwards, which is a breech birth, or two lambs coming up into the birth canal at once. And then we can put our glove on, lie the ewe down, and put the lambs into the correct position and help her give birth. Nine times out of 10, they get on with it perfectly happily themselves. The lambs are coming out in the correct position. But the first thing we see before the lamb comes out is a bubble of the amniotic sac. So the lambs are floating inside this bag that I mentioned, we see a bubble of that come out of the ewe, that then breaks, known as the waters breaking, and all the fluids gush out, and then the lamb follows two front feet and nose first. And that's quite a skill, spotting that it's coming out in the right position. You may remember from a previous episode, in the preparation, what we've done is we've crutched these ewes, we've taken the wool around their woolly back ends, so we have a clear view of what's going on so we can see the lamb coming out. The ewe will give birth to her lamb or lambs if she's having more than one. We'll allow her to lick them and start to bond with them. And then we bring them forward into the individual pens. And that's where they bond as a family. They're in these individual pens so that the lambs don't get lost in amongst the other sheep. And whilst the ewe is licking one, sometimes the lamb she had five minutes ago will wander off in amongst the other sheep and she can lose it. So we have them in individual pens so they don't get lost and they bond as a family and she'll lick those lambs dry. And then comes the next job of the shepherd, looking after them once we've got them into the little pens. Stay tuned to find out more about the incredible work here at the Cotswold Farm Park and all the energy and effort that goes into raising our lambs. And if you want to be notified when the next episode is uploaded, then don't forget to click the little bell just at the bottom of your screen. In the next episode, we'll look at postnatal care and what the lamb requires in the first few days of its life. 